thanks for joining me today on My Smart Tech TV. Today, I'm joined by Kobe Hanok, who's the CEO at Weebit Nano. So welcome, Kobe. Hi, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, so you work for, you're, you're the CEO of Weebit uh, Nano. Can you tell me about what they do and the technology that you're developing? So Weebit is in the semiconductor space. It's uh, actually a very exciting space right now since uh, practically anything and everything you touch has semiconductors in it. So um, uh, we're developing a memory technology, uh, even to be more exact, what's called a non-volatile memory. So these are the memories that don't lose their content even when you unplug them from the power, you know, like a USB stick or an SSD drive in your laptop. Um, and uh, we're developing that technology. We've been developing it already for um, almost six years now. And um, it's, uh, as I said, it's a very uh, exciting new technology. Uh, the existing technology in this domain is called uh, Flash, and uh, it's been around for a very long time. Uh, and people are looking for something which is more advanced. Uh, you know, the, the demands are constantly increasing. So our technology, uh, has much lower power consumption than flash. So that's of course important for mobile devices. It's much faster. It's much easier to manufacture actually. It's much simpler and easier to manufacture. So also lower cost to manufacture. So. Great. And what about so resistive random access memory? What is that and how does that differ from flash? Is that the same thing as the semiconductor memory? Oh, actually, yeah, I didn't mention that the technology we're developing is re-RAM or resistive RAM, okay. uh, which is uh, what's, uh, you know, eventually will be replacing Flash. Uh, <clears throat> that's kind of the new, uh, the new generation. So, uh, yeah, thank you for it. And what's, and what's the difference? How does it differ? Um, you mentioned a bit of it there, but tell me some of the ways that they differ from each other. It's actually very different. It's uh, the whole concept is uh, is different. Uh, flash works by retaining a charge. So basically, you either you you either have a charge or you don't, and that's kind of uh, uh, an electronic char electric charge. Okay. So you have a zero or a one. Resistive RAM actually works on a resistor. So we we kind of uh, build and break uh, a resistor. Uh, I don't know if to go into the, the technicalities of it, but um, it's uh, just a, in a very simple way. Uh, we have a certain material between two metal plates and when you apply voltage, ions kind of make a short circuit in there and that's a, a logical one. And then when you apply negative voltage, the ions move and, and you have a short, uh, an open circuit. So that's kind of uh, basically what we do. Great. And so will re-RAM, do you reckon it's going to completely replace Flash in the future or is it going to kind of, is there an enough of a market for both? Where do you see that kind of heading in the future? Well, the market is huge. Uh, it's expected uh, in the next couple of years, it's expected to reach uh, over a hundred billion US dollars. So it's, it's a very big market. Uh, first of all, it's important to explain a little bit about this market. Uh, you know, today we have surveillance cameras everywhere, right? You know, we have on Instagram and TikTok and, and whatever, you have all of these video clips and, and people are uh, transferring so many videos and images and, and whatever uh, on WhatsApp and, and so on. So all of these things, you know, you might not realize it, but they need to be stored somewhere. And, and the demand is growing exponentially. It's, it's just crazy how many video clips are created every second uh, and, and just how much there is to store. So there, the demand is huge uh, and it's growing very fast. Today, memory is already the largest element in semiconductors. And, and again, I know that in Australia, people don't always realize just how important semiconductors are. So, I, I think the simplest way to try to, to explain it to, uh, to financial people is look at the top 10 market cap companies in the world. You know, 10 years ago, they were energy companies, financial companies, you know, Citicorp and Exxon and whoever. Today, you look at the top 10, nine of them are semiconductor companies, basically, you know, the Google, Facebook, Amazon, 
all of these guys, Apple, et cetera, these are all companies that are creating semiconductors that are based on semiconductors. And, and that's really where the world is heading. And in this domain of semiconductors, memory is the largest segment. This is uh, a critical, because you can't have uh, an electric or an electronic device without memory. In it. Mm. So it's really, um, you know, the, the basis for everything, you know, no matter if you're doing um, robotics or you're doing um, <clears throat> Uh, 5G or AI or, you know, whatever autonomous vehicles, you need memory in there. Mm -hmm. And and this is a very exciting domain. So WeBit is uh, is now uh, just moving into uh, productization mode. We've been developing the technology for a long time. It's a very, you know, in the semiconductor space, everything is very delicate, very uh, sensitive. Uh, and now we, we announced that we're working uh, with the first production fab. A fab is where you manufacture semiconductors. So we're, uh, they licensed our technology. We have our first commercial agreement uh, here. And we're starting to, uh, we're now transferring, not, a, not starting, we're transferring now the technology to their facility and we'll be getting it ready for um, production. And um, uh, yeah, we'll be getting into the market. Uh, you don't replace Flash all at once. It's going to take a, a long time, but you know, bit by bit, uh, as as we progress, I believe we'll be taking more and more market share. That's amazing. And um, so, what does a rerun physically look like? As in, can I find it at the bottom of my, of my bag? Does it look? <laughs> does it have, what does it look like if you just see the physical item? Well, first of all, in order to see it, you'll need a very, very strong microscope, uh, okay. microscope <laughs> because we're talking about nanometers. So in, in the semiconductor space, now everything is about nanometers. And a nanometer is uh, one uh, a 10 to the minus 9 of a meter. So just to try to give you a feeling for it, uh, you know, if you put a nanometer next to a cross section of a hair, a human hair, it's like putting a person next to the Empire State Building. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how tiny wow, it's, 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 amazing. <laughs> it's not much more than a few atoms and molecules or something. It's, it's mm -hmm. very small. So, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you can't really see it. And on a little piece of silicon, you have, you know, today you, you already have billions of components there. So it's, uh, it's really crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, as I said, in, in terms of if you actually have that very strong microscope, uh, you'll end up seeing these two metal layers with that uh, material in the middle. So not easy to find at the bottom of your bag then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, actually, you have it everywhere. I mean, okay. again, uh, you have it in your cell phone, you have it in your laptop, you have it in your refrigerator, in your washing machine, in your, uh, uh, you know, any appliance that you have at home, the wearables, I mean, uh, your, your whatever, Garmin watch or uh, uh, anywhere you look today, uh, anything that has electronics in it has uh, memory also. Every, everything has electronics uh, in it today um, and, and, and it's something really is spreading into everything. And something as a consumer, I'm sure, you know, you kind of overlook that. You don't really think about how important that is. But yeah, of course, it's so, it's so important. Yeah. You guys mentioned yeah, on your you, you say you say that you back up your your the stuff from your cell phone backs up to the cloud. Yeah, now, the cloud isn't those white things up there. No, the you don't cloud, even think about it. You're just like, yeah, huge data centers. You have no idea just how big these data centers are. And they're all memory. Okay, you have actually most of these data centers require so much energy right now that they have their own uh, power uh, station right next to them. So uh, it's uh, it's just huge, huge uh, uh, data centers full of uh, memory. Now, you guys mentioned on your website, the market needs a new non-volatile memory technology, which will provide a solution for the smaller process geometrics. Can you talk me through what that means? So in, in the semiconductor space, it's all about shrinking. And some people might even have heard the term Moore's Law, which basically says that every two years, the amount of semiconductors that you can put on a single piece of silicon will double. So imagine that every two years now, since the 60s, everything is doubling. 
So the, what you can put on a, on a piece of silicon today, on, on a small piece of silicon today, used to fill whole you know, buildings uh, in the past. Um, now, uh, when, you, um, when you're talking about all that shrinking, that's how you get down to the nanometers. When I started in this industry, we weren't talking about nanometers and it was micrometers and even larger than that. So it's, it's been shrinking all the time. Flash has hit the wall. They cannot shrink below 40 nanometers. So that's kind of been where they, they got stuck. Now, the industry is continuing. The industry now has gone down to uh, 28. 28 actually is, is one of the most popular, uh, what we call nodes, 28 nanometers. But the world has gone down to uh, 22, 16, 10, 7, 5. They're already working on 3 nanometers. Uh, the world is constantly shrinking, mm -hmm. and uh, Flash is stuck. Rear M can continue to go down to uh, much smaller uh, uh, geometries. So it's, uh, it's very exciting because all of these advanced uh, technologies, AI and, and others that are going so rapidly down to these very tiny geometries, uh, we will be able to address them, uh, whereas Flash is, is really kind of, you can't uh, put it into these designs. Mm, that's so interesting. Yeah, wow. And so uh, I've read as well, there's been talk around a global semiconductor shortage. Can you talk me through what, what that is and if, if there is a, is a shortage? Oh, there's a huge shortage. Okay, yeah. it's, gotten to, it's gotten to the point where just in the regular press, you hear about it. I mean, you know, the, the car shortage is now so bad that if you try to uh, order a new car, it'll take, uh, you know, more than half a year, I think, till you get it. Uh, okay. And uh, But it's not only in cars, by the way. It's uh, even refrigerators and, and any, any appliance today. It's becoming really bad. Uh, the demand for semiconductors is so big. Uh, as I said, nine of the 10 large semiconductor uh, of the 10 uh, top market cap companies in the world are semiconductor companies. Yeah. Wow. It's, you know, it's part of that. The demand is just so big. Uh, everyone wants it for everything. And, uh, you know, during the COVID period, we had a few uh, shutdowns or, or, uh, uh, the, the supply went down a bit. Now it's back to full speed and above. You know, it's uh, it's crazy what's going in this uh, industry. Um, so it's uh, there's a very big shortage. Uh, there's a lot, a very high demand for semiconductors. Uh, very exciting times. I was going to say that puts you guys in a, a fantastic position, and that kind of nicely brings me to my final uh, question: When will we start seeing your memory technology and products? So we, uh, we have uh, our first production fab that's licensing our technology. Uh, we're transferring the technology to them. And then we'll do what's called qualification. It's, it's basically getting the technology ready for mass production. You need to run a large number of, uh, let's just call it chips to simplify it through the fabs. I mean, wafers uh, with chips on them. And you need to verify that all of them uh, produce the same result, all of them come out operating properly and uh, uh, in a uniform way, all of them are similar, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to really go through that uh, pre-production mode where you certify, if you want to call it, or we call it qualification, that the technology is ready for mass production. And once we finish that, uh, then it's basically available to the public. There's already uh, uh, many companies uh, that make products uh, that are interested in this technology that we're talking to. Uh, some of them have already approached Skywater about it. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, the transferring the technology and getting it qualified is going to take us uh, uh, towards the end of next year. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's a very delicate process. We need to take what we did in the R&D facility and transfer it uh, to a different environment, even though it's similar, but they use 
Uh, actually, it's funny because the terms that we use are we need to transfer the recipe because we use actually ovens uh, when we're making semiconductors. Oh, really? And uh, <laughs> so we need to transfer, you know, they have slightly different ovens than what we have in our R&D facility and slightly different machinery. So you need to adapt things. And again, it's, it's so delicate that the, the most minute thing uh, can cause a difference. So you need to be careful about how you transfer it. And the manufacturing process takes time. I mean, every round of silicon uh, takes uh, you know a couple of months to, to get things done. So, uh, but it's uh, it's going to be there, and customers are already looking at it and looking at how they can uh, embed our technology into their uh, chips. Uh, so it's it's very exciting times ahead. And is the goal that one is it one size fits all? As in, so we, you know your final product will be applicable to different models of a oven and different um, electronical items, or do you have different variations for different products? There will be there will be different variations. First of all, we'll need to adapt our technology to multiple what's called nodes. So you know, right now the first that we started with is 130 nanometers. Uh, we'll be going down obviously to much smaller geometries. We're working on it already and uh, we'll be going to smaller geometries. There are also uh, all kinds of variants within these technologies that we'll be adapting to and we'll be working with multiple fabs. Right now we started with Skywater, we're focused on them, but we're already talking to other uh, facilities. We'll want more than just one uh, production facility to manufacture our technology. Um, and, and customers, what happens here is actually a customer, because everything is shrinking so much, you can put a full system on a single chip. So you can actually have one chip that has the processor, the communication, whatever, sensors or all kinds of other things there, and also the memory, obviously. So the memory is embedded into that chip. Now, every customer has somewhat different requirements from the memory. So they, uh, many times, they will come to us and say, you know, the memory that you have, kind of the standard memory that you put in the library is nice, and many people are using it, but we have a special need. You know, we need to be, we need it to be a little bit faster, uh, you know, a, a different shape, uh, all kinds of things like that. And we'll be doing special engineering for them, what's called non-recurrent engineering. They'll be paying us also for that service. And uh, obviously that isn't sustainable when you grow to mass production. So uh, we'll be developing what's called a memory compiler for these guys so that they can actually in a more automatic way provide parameters and, and this compiler will generate the memory automatically for them. Amazing. Wow, it sounds like it's just an extremely interesting and um, yeah, booming industry. Final question would be sure. for those listening, if they want to find out more, what's the call to action? Um, yeah, where can people go to find out more? Well, uh, first of all, our website is, uh, is a very good place to look at. Uh, we also publish a lot of things on Twitter and LinkedIn. So, um, and there's always the info email if anyone has a specific uh, question, info at webitmanual.com. So um, uh, we'll be glad to give uh, information and yeah, follow our website. That's brilliant. We'll, we'll link those in the show notes as well. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining me today, Kobe. I really appreciate it. Have I missed anything? Is there anything that you wanted to say that I hadn't covered today? Uh, no, I think that's... Uh, covered it all. Good. It is a very exciting domain. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Bye. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.